Joining us to discuss more the health of the housing sector, Sherry Olofsson, the director of the Carnegie Group Think Tank and author of the book Foreclosure Nation. Still with us is George Goncalves, head of U.S. rate strategy for fixed income at Nomura. And Sherry, I want to get your thoughts on that latest housing data we got at yesterday. Home sales falling to their slowest pace in nine months. Uh, what do you think is ailing the housing market ahead of the spring selling season? Well, what's missing from U.S. housing right now are those first-time buyers and the, the entry-level and workforce buyers. That's been a problem for a long time, and that's reflecting a real growing issue with affordability and access, which, you know, even though we say real estate is local, is really actually a growing global problem. We're seeing it in France and Sweden and India and China. Uh, here in the U.S., housing is actually more affordable than in some of those places, particularly in the cities. But, you know, the problem used to be a conversation about uh, wages and home prices, which is still an issue. Now it's even more of an issue, like you mentioned, about supply. We just don't have enough housing units here. India, for example, has almost a $20 million, um, 20 million unit shortage. Uh, and we're seeing mayors across the U.S. starting to address this. Mayor de Blasio in New York, the mayor of Denver are looking at, you know, these kinds of problems. We had so many units converted to rentals during the recession, uh, and builders just stopped building entry-level housing. They were focusing on that luxury. Mixed data when looking at the housing sector. George, how will that be factored in in today's Janet Yellen's testimony? Look, I think that you know the housing has always played a crucial role to the recovery of the U.S. And, and as we've been noticing, and, and it's been kind of a, a, a choppy kind of move in housing. And I think that you know it does play a role into the Fed's uh, thinking. However, you know, it, it is focusing on on the disinflationary more so than on the housing sector in my mind. Uh, Shari, let's uh, come back to you and just talk about that mismatch that you mentioned briefly earlier between what builders are building and indeed uh, what consumers want to buy. Uh, how serious is that? Is that something that we'll come to regret in a few years' time? Uh, you know, I really don't know. I mean, let's hope. The pro part of the problem is builders are building what the financing is accessible for, uh, and home buyers just have not been able to afford home prices, you know, at the at the entry and workforce level. Part of that is because we have so many more renters. We have millions of renters here who are paying more than 50 percent of their income in rent, so it's very difficult to save a down payment. Uh, last year was actually the first year where homes that were built and sold for over 400,000 exceeded homes built and sold under 200,000. So in addition to not building as many homes, we've had basically, you know, the wrong homes for this entry-level buyer being built. I don't see the problem ending soon. And with the interest rates rising, potentially in June, uh, that's going to create a bigger issue. It's sort of counterintuitive to lowering the FHA mortgage insurance and allowing uh, Fannie and Freddie loans with a 3% down payment, all those things that are being done here to enhance affordability. George, of course, we've had the end of quantitative easing. When rates do start going up, how much of a rate rise will mortgage uh, payers be able to stomach initially? So the irony, actually, kind of hearing uh, the other uh, other person on, on the line just kind of going over the affordability issues, and the irony is if rates do go up, I mean, it will hit probably those that probably matter most on the, on the lower end of the housing side. And, and, and quite frankly, the, the QE policy, some would argue, have helped kind of channel money into the upper end of the housing sector. So it's not clear that's going to be a one-size-fits-all. If rates do go up, will it you know, defer fo folks from the high end for buying? Probably not. And meanwhile, on the, on the lower end, it probably will matter some. But you know, having said that, we really don't expect a kind of really massive rise in rates, and we're really arguing semantics: June versus September rate hikes. The Fed is when they start going, they're going to go very slow, and they're going to be very cautious. All right, we're going to leave it there. Jo George Congalves of Nomura and Sherry Olafson, director of the Carnegie Group Think Tank. Thank you, both of you, for your time here on Worldwide Exchange.